Hi. Uh, for this video, I thought I'd go over importing graphics um, from Illustrator, and if I can dig around and find one from Photoshop, I'll, I'll show you how to do that as well. Um, but I think that for a number of projects, uh, being able to import from an, another program is helpful, especially if you're familiar with using Illustrator or Photoshop rather than drawing in Flash. So let me go over into Illustrator here. I've uh, made a, a graphic of a biplane, and uh, I've done a couple of things here that are going to be helpful uh, once, once we bring this into uh, Flash. Notice that over in the Layers palette, um, I've made a couple of different layers. I made kind of a fuselage layer, which I titled Plane. Um, I have a couple of prop layers, which we're going to use to assemble into um, a movie clip so that the prop appears to spin. Um, if I turn off these layers, notice that here's, here's one propeller. If I um, advance the layer, the propeller seems to be moving and the intent is, is that we'll import those layers and they'll come in as keyframes and animate out that way. And then we have a cone, which is just the, the front end of the, the plane. We're going to assemble all of those um, items as, as different library items, and then we're going to um, put them together into one movie clip, which will be a, a plane movie clip. So let me uh, close this and we'll move over into Illustrator. Um, no, I'm sorry, into Flash. Let me actually, I'm going to save this to a location because I don't want to hunt around for it on my drive. So I'm going to just save this to the desktop so that I can easily find it. Okay, and then over in Flash, uh, I'm going to go to our library and if you if you've read the chapter on symbols, you'll know that as you make symbols, they appear in the library. Well, why is this helpful? Um, well, the first thing to remember is that the library makes this object um, globally editable. I can go in and edit an object in the library, and everywhere it's used, it updates. That's cool. But what's even cooler is that every time you use an instance of a symbol, it doesn't take the same amount of memory as it would to make a copy of all of the stuff that makes up that symbol. Um, you're just using an instance, so the file size in Flash is quite a bit smaller. So if you're in the habit of copying, you know, option copying or drag copying or whatever, um, if you're using a repeated graphic element, even if it's just a graphic, get in the habit of putting it into the library and then pull it out of the library and use it um, on the stage instead. Anyway, uh, let's import that. So I'm going to choose File, Import, and I'm going to import this directly to the library. And conveniently it takes us to the desktop. Of course you'd search around and find your graphic file. Here's the that graphic. And when you import to the library you get this big dialog box and it says, you know, what uh, layers do you want to import? Now I could import the whole thing and it would come in as a graphic item in Flash and it would come in only on a single layer in Flash. But instead of that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, just import the plane layer to begin with. And it's going to come in as a single Flash layer. And notice that it comes in, and it's just titled Bay Biplane AI. Um, also, uh, its, it's uh, little symbol here indicates that it's a graphic, and that's, that's okay. Let me open this up a little bit so we get a bit of a preview. If you want to rename these, which makes sense, um, you can just right-click or control-click, choose Rename. And I'm just going to call this um, Plane. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and import the next group. So I'm choosing the same file again. And this time, I'm going to import the individual props. I'll leave the, the cone off of it. So I'm going to bring those in. And instead of having it be flash layers, 
It can do multiple flash layers or a single flash layer. I'm going to choose keyframe. And you'll see what happens here as I bring it in as keyframes. Now this time when I bring that in, I have this prop and notice that the um, icon for it is a movie clip instead of a graphic symbol. And that's a, a good indicator that I've brought in keyframes. I'm going to go ahead and uh, rename this. Just call it prop. And we can play the little movie clip um, can preview it here. And it just appears to turn because I made those little things just like I showed you in the layers. Um, and what's cool is that it now appears to be turning through time, and you'll see here in a second why that becomes really cool. Finally, I'm going to choose File, Import, um, again to the library, and I'm going to just bring in that cone. So we'll just turn off everything else except for the cone. Um, and this time I'm going to bring it in just as a single flash layer. It comes in one more time, and notice it's another graphic symbol. I'll just rename this cone. Okay, now here's a, a good example of uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to make a new symbol a movie clip symbol and it's going to have a movie clip inside of it and this is a great reason why you would have movie clips inside of movie clips this little guy will be the rotating prop of it and well you'll see here in a second so I'm going to go under insert and I'm just going to choose new simple and I'm going to call it biplane it's going to be a movie clip here just press OK when you, when you start editing uh, a new symbol, you get this little registration point. This is the point that is used on the stage to reference its uh, the movie clip's X and Y position. I, in order to keep things um, sane, I usually like keeping this in the upper left-hand corner of the movie clip, but it, it's not critical. Um, but if you're trying to do that, it might get a little hard to put this together, uh, you know, working off this registration point. So I'm going to go under view and I'm going to bring up rulers. I'm going to just drag down a guide, one that goes along the registration point edges. So it's easy for me to line things up and make sure that it's registered against this edge. All right, so I'm, I've got that. Notice that I'm editing the biplane rather than being in the scene. I'm going to drag in these different parts. So I'm going to drag in the plane part. Just put this up on the stage, or I'm sorry, right up against that registration point. There we go. I can take the uh, the prop. So I'll drag that over and drop it on top. Prop on top. Um, and then finally we'll take the cone, just drag that in, I think I missed it here, there we go, and position that cone so it looks correct. Alright, so we get all this stuff in position, and then once we're set, we go back to the scene. Notice that we still haven't put anything on the stage. But if I take my biplane, I can drag this onto the stage now. And let's just preview it. So I'm going to go under Control, Test Movie. And notice that I have that little uh, spinning propeller. So the spinning propeller is inside the movie clip that's inside the plane. So why is, why is it helpful to have one movie clip inside of another? Because now I can take this main uh, movie clip and I can move it around and the movie clip inside will move on its own. It's kind of like uh, the moon rotating around the earth. If you were to try to get the moon to rotate around the earth um, while the earth is rotating around the sun and you didn't have the earth to register the moon against, think about that. That would be kind of this really complex 
um, spiraling rotation that would go all the way around the Sun. Instead, since we just have the Moon rotate around the Earth, we can just make the rotation around the Earth and then we take the Earth itself and move it around to make it go around the Sun. So, uh, now that I'm saying this, I'm thinking I should have done that as an animation. But I'm going to just move this off to one side, make a motion tween, let's extend it a little bit. On the other side of the motion tween, we'll just go across, maybe we'll scale it down a little bit too. Let's look at the motion. And again, one property of a movie clip is you don't see the movie clip play until you test the movie. So if you're noticing that that prop isn't playing right now, that's um, just kind of the way that it works. So now I'm going to go to control and test the movie. And notice that it appears as it's moving across the stage. Uh, the propeller is moving independently on its own. We don't have to get the propeller to rotate on its own and rotate across the stage at the same time. We just hook it to this main movie clip and it'll just follow along with whatever the main movie clip's doing. So anyway, uh, I hope this gives you an idea of, um, first of all, importing Illustrator files and, and then how you could use them. Um, but I just realized I, I said I'd look at Photoshop stuff too. So why don't I, um, we'll get rid of all this stuff and uh, I'll remove this tween too. Let's get rid of these extra frames. So I'm just holding down shift and clicking on the extra frames and choosing remove frames. All right, so we're back to the stage here. Um, let me detour into Photoshop for a second. Um, I'm going to open up Photoshop and I'm going to uh, edit a, a, a duck graphic. And I'm going to show you the two differences that, that you'll notice when you're working in Photoshop. Um, let, me, let me open up the duck. You guys probably seen this graphic before. Um, let's see. Let me do a search for it. Okay. Here's this duck graphic. I'm going to save the first one just to the desktop. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this background. So instead of having the white background to it, um, let's use the magic wand here. I'm going to actually first turn this into a layer. There we go. And with the white area selected, I'm just going to press Command X to cut it out. All right, so this has got a transparent background to it. I'm going to save this as and the first time I'm going to just save it as a PSD file with the layer. And then I'm going to do another save as. This time let me choose TIFF with the layers as well. Now I haven't tested this in CS4, but in CS3 what would happen is that uh, TIFF file, even if it had the background removed, it'd still come in with this white background. So let's see if that's still the case. So I'm going to just uh, jump back over to Flash here. File. And we're going to import this into the, into the library, just like we've been doing. And let's just bring in, first of all, Ducky JPEG. So we import Ducky JPEG. Notice that it's just a picture file. If I drag um, ducky JPEG onto the stage. Okay, we, we see the, the duck is here. Now, um, I'm going to change the stage color just so that we can see whether we have a transparent background or not. So let's just pick kind of a light yellow. Okay, so you'll notice that ducky JPEG has this white background. All right, let's import another one. This time I'll bring in the TIFF file. This is the file again that had the erased background. Let's see what happens. So we have ducky.tiff. 
bring it in. Notice that even though it has the erased background in Photoshop, in Flash, it still sees that white as being, you know, opaque. All right, finally, let's import into the stage, or I'm sorry, into the library. We'll import the PSD file. Aha, so this is kind of cool. We get a different thing happening with PSD files. Notice, conveniently, we also get a little thing showing us that there's going to be transparency, which is great. It's going to bring it in as a flash layer. Um, so I'm going to just press OK. Now Ducky PSD comes in, comes in as a graphic. So instead of just being a picture, an imported picture, it comes in as a graphic file, um, a, a graphic symbol. So that's, that's important. And if I drop it on the stage, it has that transparent background. So pretty cool. I can now do some things with this since it's a symbol um, that I couldn't do with it just before as, uh, since it was just a, um, an image. But there you go. Uh, so we've brought in some Illustrator stuff, brought in uh, different Photoshop items. You can see if you want uh, non-rectangular Photoshop type graphics, um, build them and save it as a PSD file and then just remove all of the content and, and you'll have a non-rectangular object.